it's time to go another level in your faith. Oh, I tell you, God is moving and doing great and mighty things. He's ready to perform in your life. I feel the power of God today. I tell you, I'm excited about what is going on in the world today. Oh, yes. Why? Because God's glory is on this earth. And those that will listen to him, those that will do what he says, you're going to go another level of faith. You're going to go up higher. He said, okay, let's talk about that. I want to tell you, not only will you go higher, but you know what? You want to get that level and you want to stay there. You know, a lot of people go up and they fall back down. You don't want to fall back down. We're going to talk about that today. I tell you, it's down in my soul because the Lord changed this message today just for you. Oh, yes, he did. Let me know. Let me know. As my bishop says, holler back at me. All right, let's talk about going another level of faith. See, it takes vision. To see wonders, marvels, and extraordinary manifestations of God's greatness in your life. Let me tell you, you can't be getting frustrated. You can't be getting upset with people. It's going to take vision to see what God's going to do in your life. In other words, it's going to take you starting to see out of God's eyes. Come on. And that's going to be because you're reading and that you're listening and you're putting yourself in an environment and an atmosphere. As we do around here, you've been doing it. Wednesday night Bible study, Sunday morning service. First Sunday, we're doing communion. Just actively involved. Oh, service, service, service. God is so good. That's the hour that we end. It's a busy time, but that's the hour that we we're in. It's a time of, uh, I'm telling you, much to be done in the family. Oh yes, much to be done in your churches, much to be done concerning your finances, much to be done. But it's a time that if you will listen to God and obey what he says, God is taking you higher. He's taking you to another level of faith. Oh yes, he is. You cannot get angry got to stay, remain humble, keep the right attitude. You cannot get frustrated. No, no, no. You got to be in control of your emotions. Oh, you can do that by getting that relationship with God. It's vital, people of God, because it'll take you into this that God is doing in this hour. Mm. Yes, it will. Glory to God. Why? Because God said, I made a covenant with you. Uh-huh. Before all your people, I will do wonders never before done in any nation in all the world. That's Exodus 34 and 10. See, God has said it. God has already planned it. God has predestined it. This hour is no surprise to God. God knew that this time was coming. God knew that you'd be stepping out of one of the most horrific years of living history. That was living history. <laughs> Sounds like a double uh, uh, noun there. That living history. But oh, God has a future glory in store for you. Oh, and as you go into another level of faith, because to come out of 2020, you had to walk by faith. Oh, some had 30, some 60, some 100, but you walk by faith. And today you're going another level of faith in God. Yes, you are. Oh, glory to God. Why? Because God has given us a covenant. You know what? You've got to expect God's greatness in your life. You got to look forward to it. See, you got to go another level of faith. That's what it's going to take in this hour. You wonder, well, I'm doing what I usually do. And I'm saying what I usually say. And I'm giving what I've always given. Yeah, you got to go another level. You got to do more. <laughs> oh, it works, but oh, is it good. Huh, what do I do? Just listen and obey. I got some instructions today for you. Glory to God. Because you're going to see those things that are unfamiliar. You're going to see those things, let me tell you right now, that they're going to be occurrences that are uncommon, that they're rare, that they're special. That's what's happening in this hour, and you're going to be in on it. Oh, yes, you're not going to miss this move. Mm -mm. Not if you tuned in here. No, you're not. I'm telling you, you're going to be overwhelmed with the admiration of what God's getting ready to do in your life. You're going to be in awe. Mm-hmm. And reverence of God's greatness coming to pass in your life. Because you're going another level of faith. I sense it down in my spirit today. So there are three things you're going to have to do. You're going to have to think it. You're going to have to decree it. And you're going to have to expect it. Many times we think going another level of faith, you read about it. You see it in the Bible and different things like that. But if you 
if you look at each one of the stories, which we'll highlight some of them today, you'll see that they were thinking it, decreeing it, and expecting it. Hallelujah. And when you move into that, you go another level. And, 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 and as you go another level, the greatness comes to pass in your life. Those things that have you in awe, those things that put you in amazement and admiration of the great God that we serve. Amen. So first thing that you need to do to go another level of faith, think it. The Bible says in Proverbs 23 and 7, as a man thinks in his heart that holds no gender, so is he. Uh-huh. See, what you choose to think about most and what you dwell on most will eventually come to pass in your life. You will become what you think about most and your life will tend to go in the direction of your most dominant thoughts. So you got to start thinking about the goodness of God. Regardless of what's going on in your life, I don't care how it seems and what it seems. I'm telling you right now, God's going to turn that thing around. Oh yes, you got to begin to think about the goodness. See, oh, you think about what God's getting ready to do. God's getting ready to do some great and mighty things in your life. Oh, I won't take it back. Oh, hallelujah. God's getting ready to bless you. Let me tell you, You've been operating on what you have been doing. God is saying a commitment of deeper. I've got, you know, certain, there are those around me that's stepping in the deeper. And when I see it, I say, oh boy, there's some greatness getting ready to happen. A whole new level of faith. See, when you step and you go into a greater commitment in your giving, in your living, in your walking, in your talking, as you begin to do that, it means that you caught a vision of something great that God is getting ready to do in your life. And you know you can't get there by yourself. No, you can't. You got to get there all oh, by going another level, by faith in God. As you step out, listening to him and obeying him, doing what he said do, oh, he's going to lead you right to the, the greatness that he has for you. Oh, and it's going to have you in awe. It's going to amaze you. Oh, and yet you're going to be reverencing our God. Because you're going to know that God did it. Only God, only God can do what he's about to do in your life. The goodness of God will flow in your life when you start thinking about it. Just thinking about it. It'll start coming your way. Ah, David said that in Psalms 31. You can read all the verses there in Psalms 31. It's so good. And it is where he was in trouble. Oh, and it, he didn't know how he was going to come out of that thing. But yet he's beginning to pray. And he began there in Psalms 31. And as he began to speak the word hope, hope began to arise on the inside of him. What he started out is not how he ended up. Hope began to arise as he began to speak, oh, about what he was thinking. And then as he thought about what he was thinking and began to speak it out of his mouth, he began to declare it. I said thinking it and then began to declare it. Oh, yes. Didn't mean that you do that occasionally. <clears throat> when you make a declaration, when you start declaring God's word, you say it every day. Why? Because you're calling things that be not as though they were. You believe in God that that's the way it's going to be. So you begin to declare God's word. The Bible says, according to as it is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. Second Corinthians 4 and 13. When you really believe something, you're going to talk about it. Oh, glory to God. When David began to talk about the Lord, in the Psalms that you read, every time David got in distress, every time trouble came, every time he needed to go another level of faith because the situation seemed impossible. Oh, you know, whenever it seems like you've gotten to a point where it looks like you're not going any further, when you've gotten to a point where it seems like it's just a a pause and the affliction is getting greater and greater. It looks like the enemy is gaining ground up on you. Oh, let me tell you, that's when you start declaring. You don't let the devil back you up in a corner and you don't say anything. You start declaring God's word. Oh, and in Psalms 31, David began to declare God's word. This is a time of dire distress for him. Oh, that he was going through a dire problem. Glory to God. His son, Absalom, oh, had gotten a coup privately against him. And it seemed as though, oh, he didn't know how it was going to turn out. But he started praying to God. And then he began to declare. He began to declare the goodness of God. He began to declare what he wanted God to do for him. Oh, 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I, oh, 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 you know, when the enemy begins to privately uh, begin to do things and doing things against you, and you don't know what's going on, and you don't know how it's going to be, and you don't know what's going to turn out, and then a coup that was from the inside. Oh, 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 oh. Trouble was in the land. Oh, but David, I tell you, he began to pray. And from that Psalms 31, we also get where he said in Psalms, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that put his trust in him. He began to put his trust in God. He began to depend on God. He began to lean on God. Oh my God. And he began to declare there in Psalms 31. Glory to God. All of those verses. Oh, glory to God. He let God know, I know my times are in your hand. Oh, I'm putting my trust in you. You got to let the Lord know. I don't care what time the enemy has planned and what the enemy plan on doing. Oh, glory to God. But God will come. Oh, Oh, glory to God. And he will turn, flip the script, turn that situation around and work it in your favor. When you be, begin to declare what the word of God says, when you begin to speak it into your atmosphere, oh, my God, my God. And this is what David did. God turned that whole situation around. The enemy that was coming to kill him, God turned that situation around. And David didn't have to do anything. Oh, no. Oh, let me tell you. Absalom so busy coming to kill David and his hair that was long and beautiful got caught up in a tree. Oh. He died. Hmm. Right then, God will, let me tell you, He'll get rid of the enemy so fast, it'll blow your mind. He'll get rid of the enemy. Oh, it is God that will move on your behalf. I said it's God. When you go another level of faith and you will dare to trust God and begin to declare what his word says, you're not dealing with the facts. You are speaking the truth into the situation. And let me tell you, the truth is the highest form of reality. You begin to speak that truth of what God says. You bring a higher authority in your situation. But God said in Jeremiah, I am the king, I'm the judge, and I am the lawgiver. I'm telling you, when you begin to depend on God, you put your trust in him. You say, God, my times are before you. You know everything. I plead your mercy on the day. I lay myself on the court of the higher authority. And oh, God moved for David. God did great and mighty things. God began to move and bring to pass. Oh, and deliver and set free. And never again was that enemy coming against David anymore. Let me tell you, God will stop the enemy so in his tracks that never again will you have to deal with that. Let me tell you, when you start declaring the word of God, you're injecting power. Oh, glory to God. You're injecting what God has created in the framework of, of this world when he's began to say, God said, and God said, and God said, and God said. Oh, that's the principle that you're following when you begin to declare. And the power of God's word will begin to move. And whatever you call it, that's what it's going to be. Glory to God. And you turn those situations around by declaring it. Oh, glory to God. God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And as you begin to declare what God's word has said, you know, a lot of people, they don't speak what God said, but you start declaring what God's word is saying. Oh, oh, I'm telling you right now, when you believe it, you're going to talk about it. If you truly believe that word and what God said, and that's what happened when you begin to connect up and get that fellowship and relationship going with God through reading his word and having a time of prayer and meeting with him before you go out in the natural. Oh, you take care of all oh, the spiritual weaponry. I'm telling you right now, it'll work for you. God will begin to work. He'll teach you how to war. He'll teach you how to defeat the enemy. Oh, yes, he'll teach, he said in Psalms, I'll teach your fingers how to war. God will show you just how to fight, and that is not by might, nor is it by power, but it is by God's spirit as you listen to him, as you obey him, saith the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. So you're thinking it. You're declaring it. Then you expect it. Oh, glory to God. That means I'm looking for it. I thank God for what he has done. I'm thanking God for what he is doing. And I'm thanking God for what he's going to do. In the midst of all of the heaviness of the hour, you are begin you're going into an expectation. You're beginning to praise God. You're beginning to thank him oh, for all that he has done. I tell you, David again said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done. That's a songwriter said that. 
There's a David. David, when David began to say in the word of God, you see, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. No matter what it is that the devil is coming against you with, God is saying right now, I prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Oh, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You continue to move in that as you are expecting what God has for you in the presence of your enemy. Oh, you said the Lord is my shepherd. You're declaring it. Oh, you're thinking it. Oh, and you're expecting it. Mm, I tell you one thing, to expect something, that means that you get excited about it. You expecting it so, oh, that you'll begin to shout and praise God in spite of all that's going on. Why? Because I'm excited about it. I know that I know that I know. You believe the word of God. You believe that it is the final authority on any situation, circumstance, or thing that would present itself before you. You believe that it is that final authority. And then when, when you go to the word of God, that you've gone to a place, oh my God, where God's going to begin to move for you. He'll send the angels out because mm -hmm, he is the commander in chief of the God armies. That's the angels. God will send them out to minister, assist, and protect you. God will send the angels. He'll dispatch them. Oh, oh my God. Hey, glory to God. He will dispatch the angels. And you can expect God to deliver. You can expect God to move. You can expect him to bring about manifestations of his greatness in your life that it will just blow your mind. Oh, you are marvel at the greatness of God and how he delivers and how he sets free. Huh? I tell you, expect it. You can only do that when you're in a fellowship with him and in relationship with God. I'm telling you, you get in relationship with God, your relationship with Jesus. Oh, with God, the father through his son, Jesus. I'm here to tell you right now, it will begin to transcend all natural limitations that's trying to hold you back from receiving the victory that God has spoken in his word and that you dare to speak it out of your mouth and declare, oh, I've been thinking about it all day and expect it to come to pass. I'm looking for it. I'm expecting God to move on my behalf. Oh, glory to God. And when you expect God, let me tell you something. The psalmist David said, my soul, wait thou only upon God, for he alone is my expectation. Mm, he is my rock. He's my salvation. Ah shall not be moved. Oh, glory to God. He is my defense. See, that's Psalm 62, 5 and 6. When you begin to expect God and you let the Lord know, I'm going to wait on you. I'm not going to take second best. I'm going to receive what you've spoken to me in your word. I'm not going to, uh-uh, I'm not going to let the enemy cheat me from my victory. You're not going to steal this from me. Uh-uh, you're not going to hold it back. I'm going to receive what God's got and I'm going to wait on it. Because in God's time and on time, it's going to be just like God said. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All we got to do is wait on him. God's going to show up. Oh, yes, he will. Oh, in time, on time. God's going to do exactly what he said he was going to do. And the way he said he's going to do it. Oh, yes, he will. He'll bring you out. He'll deliver. He'll do exactly what he said. All you got to do is expect him. Think it. Hmm. Decree it. Huh. Expect it. Huh. And don't you be moved on that. Wait on it. It shall come to pass. And it'll begin to manifest in your life. You'll begin to see God restoring. You'll begin to see God giving you the, the anointing and the grace to take back everything that the devil has stolen from you. Oh, yes, you will. Glory to God. You'll begin to see God move in your life as you consistently. That means the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You continue. You continue to walk in the graces of God. You continue to believe God. You continue to think on it. You continue to decree it. You continue to expect it. I'm telling you right now, as you begin to stand in faith and be consistent, in God's word, oh, let me tell you, you're going to see God do some great and mighty things in your life. No, he won't He won't leave you with nothing. You won't end up with an armload of nothing. You're going to end up with everything God said. Proverbs 23 and 18, one of my favorite right scriptures. <laughs> uh, and surely there is an end. See, you wait on it. But surely there is an end. Oh, glory to God. Surely there is an end. 
Mm. God's going to move for you. And thine expectation shall not be cut off. Proverbs 23 and 18. See, I'm thinking. I'm decreeing it. Expecting it. Your expectation shall not be cut off. Oh, as you stand in faith of God's covenant coming to pass in your life. Oh, yes, he will. Oh, yes, he will. He'll restore. You'll start taking back everything that the devil stole from you. You'll start receiving. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. The blessings of the Lord that make it rich and add of no sorrow with it. God is a good God. God will do everything that he said he's going to do. Oh, glory to God. Why? Because he's your redeemer. Why? Because God reigns over everything. Oh, he's sovereign. He's a sovereign God. He'll do everything that he said he's going to do for you. You will not be left with an armload of nothing. You'll have everything that God said he's going to do. He'll bring it to pass in your life. He'll do it not sometimes. He'll do it every time. He'll not leave you. Mm -mm, in the hands of the adversary, of your enemy. No, no, no. You, they will not prevail over you. No, you just keep on, keep on thinking it, keep on de de declaring it, Th keep on expecting it. You'll find yourself advancing. You'll find yourself moving forward. Glory to God. You won't be held back. You will be moving forward into that that God said that he was going to bring to pass in your life. God will begin to move supernaturally in your life because the angels are dispatched. You use these, thinking it, decreeing it, expecting it. When you operate within in these three principles consistently, whoo, you'll see the greatness of God come to pass in your life. We see it throughout the Bible. When Cornelius, when he started thinking it, decreeing it, and expecting it, he expected it so. He told him, he said, y'all go. You go find Peter and, and bring him back here. Why? He was expecting his household to be filled with the Holy Ghost. He was expecting it. Why? Because he was thinking it and decreeing it. He had that relationship with God. It says it in the Bible. He had that relationship with the Lord. And in having a relationship and listening to God and obeying God, God has set you up for greatness. Peter came back, something that doesn't usually happen. I'm telling you, God will work marvel. That doesn't happen. That go back, went to Cornelius' house. Glory to God, but God prepared him before he went. Let me tell you, you haven't got to worry about God doing what he's going to do. You just got to do what God tells you to do. God has set everything up to open up for you and to bring to pass his word in your life. And when Peter got to Cornelius' house, the Bible says he began to speak the word and they were all filled. Uh huh. See, God wants to do a great and mighty thing in your household. They were all filled. This, those that's going through concerning your family, concerning your situation, they were all filled. God wants to do it. God is ready to do it. Oh, in the name of Jesus. There are those of you that it seemeth as though certain areas of your life are bound. We see that. You can look at that. When the one that Jesus said, no greater faith have I seen in all Israel. When the man came to him, he said, you know what? I understand the word. You don't have to come to my house. All you got to do is speak the word. Yeah. He said, I'm one of authority. And those that I tell to go, they go. And when I tell them to do, they do. I understand the authority of the word of God. And so he just said, you know, you just declare it. <laughs> Woo! You just speak it. My servant will be healed. There could be different areas in your life that's bound. And you got to know when you speak that word that the enemy can't hold you bound any longer. Whatever the enemy is trying to block, stop, hinder. I want you to know you just begin to speak and declare that word. Oh, from a place of power. See, he knew the authority that Jesus held. When you begin to speak the word of God, you don't have to make it happen. God is the one that'll show up and make it happen. Oh, glory to God. He's the omnipotent one. He's the omniscient one. He's the omnipresent one. Oh, he's the one that'll show up and make it happen. All God needs you to do is to speak that word. He's a God. He's got so many ways to make that word come to pass that there's no way you could be began to even do it, but he can do it. He can do anything. Nothing is impossible with God. You begin to declare the word of God and you declare from a place of relationship and believe in God to do exactly what he said. That word will come to pass in your life. It'll begin to work. The word is like, you know, it's seeds. You can plant it. You ever notice a sprout of grass that, uh, Concrete block can be laid over. That grass is going to find a way to sprout up through that concrete. And oh, if they don't get something and, and, and use weed killer, if they don't get something and kill that sprout, 
it's going to start growing, growing, growing. <laughs> it will spring up, grow up, and others will begin to come. That's the way the word of God is. Don't you let doubt and fear put the word of God out of your mouth. You continue to declare the word of God. You declare that word, you speak it out of your mouth, and so shall it be. The word of God doesn't need any assistance other than you declare. If you declare what God says, I'm telling you right now, it shall come to pass. Oh, yes, it shall manifest. Oh, it shall happen. And so we see, he said, you don't have to come to my house. You just speak that word. I believe it. My servant will be healed. The Bible says, and Jesus spoke, and the servant was healed. Listen to this. The self-same hour. You read that account in the Bible. That self-same hour. In other words, God will move so quick when you send the word, it will heal and deliver from destruction. Psalms again. Let me tell you, 105 and 20. Let me tell you, people of God, you speak that word of God. It is so power, so powerful so full of power. It doesn't matter how hard the enemy has tried to keep you from moving forward and, and being delivered, being successful, coming to pass that the God has said in your life, your family, your finances, in that the God has granted you and the enemy don't want you to move freely in it. The devil is a liar. It doesn't matter about whatever heaven the enemy has tried to close up against you. God is ready to work a wonder. God is ready to do that that has not been done. He'll open up. Oh, glory to God. He'll open it up. Oh, yes, he will. Ah, everything that's been closed up against you, every door that's been closed, God will open every door and restore unto you. Oh, glory to God. You'll begin to see as you begin to expect God by thinking it and declaring it, you start expecting God. The favor of God and the goodness of God will begin to flow in your land. Oh, great and mighty things will be performed as never before. Oh, you'll see God resurrect. He'll begin to take those things that the natural world can say cannot happen, and you will see it performed and happen in your life. You know Jairus, when he came to Jesus, he said, my daughter is dying. Oh, before Jesus could go with him, a servant of Jairus came. He said, oh, don't bother the master. She's already dead. Jesus turned. He told me, he said, you know what? Huh, don't worry about what folks saying. Don't listen to that voice. Only believe. Only believe. At that time, he was just saying, stay focused. Stay determined. Don't lose your hope. Mm, blessed assurance. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. You're getting ready to see a wonder. You're getting ready to see an extraordinary occurrence. Oh, my God. And then along the course of the way, it seemed as though, Lord, you, I thought you was on your way. Look like it's not happening. I believe I got it in prayer you was coming. I heard you. Oh, but let me tell you, he may not come when you want it. But he's always right on time. He got to Jairus' house. You know what happened there. Oh, my God. He put all the doubters out. He put all of those that was not thinking, decree, and expecting a marvelous work of God. It was, God was ready to resurrect. He got all that out the atmosphere. He only kept those around him that was focused and determined. And oh, my God. God resurrected the dead. I'm here to tell you, God will turn around a situation that seems hopeless. I feel God moving here this morning. A situation that seems like it cannot be. A situation that all natural circumstances says it cannot happen. But if you will dare to, to think about it, decree it, and expect God. If you will dare to believe him, God will move on your behalf. God will move in the courtroom. God will move in the hospital. God will move in your finances. God will move in your family. God will move in you. God will do those things in your physical health. All that. God will move as never before. You know he moved with the woman. Glory to God with the issue of blood. She did not know what she was going to do. She was so perplexed, but oh, she prayed. And as she prayed, thinking, decreeing, and expecting, the Bible says that, you know what? She listened to God. She obeyed him regardless to the challenge, regardless to what the customs of that time said that she could not do, or it would be death. Oh, as I've always preached and shall preach, there are times when you got to, hey, make a decision. Oh, I believe God. Oh, 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 oh. I believe God. I'm going to do what God said. 
And if I perish, I perish. I'm going to do what God said. And I declare, you will not perish. Oh, hallelujah. You will not die. Ah, you will live to see the goodness of God. And oh, we know the end of that story, don't you? Oh, she did. She pressed on out, touched the hem of Jesus' garment. And the Bible says she was ever with, made whole. I'm telling you, that's a marvel. That's a miracle. That's something that had not happened in that day, that God did the exceptional, oh, supernatural in her life. God is ready to do this for you in this hour. All you got to do is think it. All you got to do is decree it. All you got to do is expect it. Oh, on a consistent basis with a relationship with God, listening to him, obeying him, doing what he said. Oh, glory to God. Look out. Great things are getting ready to happen in your life. Things that don't happen usually. Things that are uncommon. Things that are rare. Oh, God's getting ready to do great and mighty things for you as you think it, decree it, and expect it. Great and mighty things in your life. God is moving in this hour. And I won't stop saying, get ready for great things. Get ready for the marvelous. Get ready for the wonders. Get ready for the extraordinary manifestation of the presence of God, the miracles of God working in your life as never before. And at the right time, I, the Lord God, will make it happen. Oh, Isaiah, I'm telling you right now, God is ready to make some things happen. He'll make it by you thinking it. He'll make it by you decreeing it. He'll make it by you expecting it. Great things are on the way for you. I decree it and I declare it to be so in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Come on, give God glory. Give God the praise. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. God is a good God. He's truly worthy to be praised. I love him on today. Oh, and I believe his word, people. I just, I choose to believe it. And it is so. Oh, it, I'm telling you, the word of God is the highest form of reality. You want to see some things really, 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 really come to pass. Start thinking the word. Start declaring the word. Start expecting the word. And it will manifest in your life. Ah, the greatness of God. <laughs> oh, I love the Lord on today. Mm, so good, so good, so good, so good, so good, so good. Hallelujah. Oh, it's time to give. And I want you to give. I want you to give thinking about what God's getting ready to do. I want you to give declaring, saying, I'm going to obey God. I'm going to do what he said to declare. Amen. Declare it. It may be a vow that you need. Declare it. Oh, yes. Then expect God. I, I'm telling you, that's what's in here right now. That's what's happening. That's what's in the atmosphere. Oh, my, 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 my. Greatness that God is ready to do. For you. Obey him and give it. That's the way to get into successful living. I'm telling you, you haven't seen nothing yet. Ah, there's more in store for you. Think it. Decree it. Expect it. The word of God. Oh, it's coming to pass. The glory is on the earth. Come on. We got to go another level of faith. You got what you need. Think it, decree it, expect it. What? The word of God. Let's go another level of 